Hello and welcome to this new course on the Apache Kafka series. This course is on Kafka security. My name is Stefan and alongside Gerd will be your instructors for this course. So first I want to give you an introduction to Kafka security just so you know what it is about and what we'll talk about for this entire course. So welcome to the course. We'll go over everything together. So we'll go through many hands-on in this course and we'll get a setup working in AWS Cloud. We'll have encryption for SSL, we'll have authentication, SSL and SASL, and we'll have authorization or ACL. Here I am throwing buzzwords at you, but don't worry, you'll understand them all by the end of this course. Now, why do we need encryption, authentication, and authorization in Kafka? Well, let's look at a Kafka cluster we have today. Currently, any application, any client, can access your Kafka cluster, right? So that's a need for authentication. Then any of these clients can publish or consume data from any topic. That's authorization. Finally, all the data you sent to your Kafka cluster currently is fully visible on your network. It's not encrypted. Therefore, there's a need for encryption. So let's talk about the risks. Someone could intercept data being sent if you don't encrypt it and see everything you send to your Kafka cluster. That's bad, right? Someone could publish bad data or steal data from your cluster. And that's bad too. You kind of want people to authorize reads and writes. Now, someone could also delete topics and so on. So all these things, really, all these reasons push for more security and they push for an authentication and encryption model. This is what this course is about. So let's talk about encryption in Kafka. Encryption in Kafka basically will ensure that the data exchange between your clients and your brokers will remain secret to any router on the way. And routers are basically computers routing your packets. So this is very similar to what you do when you connect to an HTTPS website. So here's your Kafka client and your brokers. And currently you have this, Kafka client sending data to brokers in plain text. If you send a username and a password, the network would see it. So that's bad. When we have encryption, that data will be encrypted and only readable by the client and the broker. Therefore, any router will not be able to intercept it. That's just a quick high level overview on encryption and we have an entire section on this. Now, what about authentication? Authentication ensures that the clients can prove their identity while they connect to the Kafka cluster. So this is very similar to when you go on the website and you log in using your username and password. So let's take an example. You have your Kafka client and your Kafka broker. And the Kafka client will send some authentication data. The Kafka broker will look at it and verify the identity of the client. And then we'll say the client is authenticated. Easy, right? That looks like a, just a website. So it can take a few forms in Kafka. You can do SSL authentication and we'll see it. It's for a client to authenticate using SSL certificates. And there is SASL authentication, which is plain using username and password. Kerberos, which is the most difficult and most common one, which is using like something such as Microsoft Active Directory. And finally, Scram, which is for username and password, a bit more strong than plain. In this course, we will do SSL authentication and SASL Kerberos authentication. Plain and Scram will be similar and easier to set up, so we just wanted to tackle the hardest one first. Now, what about authorization? Once a client is authenticated, Kafka can verify its identity and give the user a name, but it still needs to know and be combined with authorization rules so that Kafka knows that, for example, the user Alice can only view the topic finance and user Bob cannot view the topic trucks. Basically, ACLs or access control list will have to be maintained by administrators to onboard new users and allow applications to source or write data. Now, if we put it all together, we can mix encryption, authentication, authorization, and this will allow our Kafka clients to communicate securely to Kafka. Clients will authenticate against Kafka. And also, would, Kafka would authorize clients to read and write to the topics it needs and is allowed to. So where is security today? Well, Kafka security is fairly new. It is out of the version 0.10. End of this recording, there's 1.0, soon 1.1 coming out. Kafka security will improve over time and become more flexible, easier to set up as time goes on. But currently, I personally judge it hard to set up Kafka security, hence this course. So the best support for Kafka security right now for applications though is Java. 
So in this course, we will solely focus on showing and demonstrating examples using the Java, uh, the Java command line or the Kafka command line and using properties config file, which is fully Java compatible. So hope that helps. Hope that gives you a good introduction to Kafka security. We are super excited to teach it to you entirely and we will see you in the next lectures.